In this video tutorial, we're going to look at what is now my new favorite Google tool. Yes, I use all sorts of Google tools, but this is the one that I find myself using the most over the last few weeks. And what is it? It's called Google Keep. And like it says here, it's for saving your thoughts wherever you are. A lot of people think of this as being similar to Microsoft's OneNote or other note-taking programs or software. And that is a good way to think about it, but it's also a way to do post-it notes online and accessible wherever you are. So that's another way to think about it. But I find Google Keep to be a great way to do things like planning, to do things like creating checkoff lists or grocery lists and things like that. I find myself using it for all sorts of things. And it's been a great way to declutter a little bit and put all of my thoughts and ideas into one online location instead of on papers all over my desk and scattered all over the place. So let's take a look at this Google Keep. Now you probably already know that if you go to google.com and sign into your free account that you can get, that there is this symbol here, the Google Apps symbol. If you click on it, you can click down here on more and it gives you even more apps and other tools from Google. But you'll notice that right there is Google Keep. So that's one way to access Google Keep. When you click on it, it should take you to something that looks somewhat like this. And it welcomes you with this message typically saying that they want you to install the Google Keep Chrome extension that will add a little symbol here at the top that helps you save things from the web. And it will also help you get back to Google Keep quickly and conveniently. I'm not gonna cover that extension in this tutorial, but Google wants to advertise that for you. I'm just gonna click got it. And let's look now at Google Keep and the layout that we have here and how it works. Basically, Google Keep is set up to help you create notes and reminders. For notes, you simply go over here where it says take a note, you click and start typing. So let's say I've been asked to create a new class for the upcoming school year. And let's say it's a creative writing course. So I can just start typing in ideas of you know, what I could do, what my syllabus might be, what the different units in the course might be. Okay, so I'm starting to jot down some basic ideas of what the class might cover. And I can just continue to type and to add content here in this note. Now, notice that it just skipped over title. If I want to title this note, I can just click on title and write thoughts on creative writing course. Okay, so I can title it that way and continue to type in the notes that I want to put there. Okay, so that's as simple as it is to create notes in Google Keep. But notice across the bottom, there are some other options that you have to add some richness to your notes. For one thing, I could remind myself about this note. So let's say tomorrow I want to be reminded about this note and maybe hopefully work on it a little bit more. Next, notice that you can add a collaborator and this is pretty exciting. I could put in a person's name, a person's email address here, save it and we could collaborate on this note and work on it together. Next, we have some color coding that we can do. So I could say, okay, anything to do with courses, I could put in in turquoise, or I could put in in red, or whatever it might be. And then anything maybe related to student projects, I could put in in green. Just whatever you wanna do, you can color code these notes to make it easier for your eyes to go where they need to go to see what you're looking for. Another thing you can do is add images. So let's say I wanna add some images to help me think about and remember maybe some short stories that I wanna include or some authors I wanna include in this course. And if I've got pictures, I could just upload those. Of course, I could just type the names, but sometimes it's more handy just to take a picture or download a picture from the internet and include it in your note. In this case, it's probably not more convenient, but that's okay. So I'm just gonna go and select a few authors click open and it put in some pictures of authors who I might want to include in this course. Okay. Now there is a Google Keep app for iPads. There's one for iPhones and for Android as well. And so I have the Google Keep app on my cell phone, which makes it very convenient to just snap a photo with my phone and in Google Keep, it'll attach it in to any note that I want to put it with. So that's a really powerful feature, in my opinion, to include photos or images with the notes that I take. If I don't really need this note anymore, I can just archive it with the click of a button. And then here in More, there are some other important options. We have Delete Note, Add Label, which is pretty exciting. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll click Add Label, and I'll call this Course Development. Click Add, 
And so now that is labeled with course development and I can search up here and easily find all of my notes and reminders related to course development. So it found it. And of course, it's also listed here in my list of labels. I could just click to get it that way as well. So I really like this option of being able to label my notes and reminders. You can also add drawings. Sometimes you just need to sketch something out and get an idea down, you know, in drawing form. And you can see there's some basic drawing tools that you can play with here. But anyway, once you're done drawing, you can just click the back button and the drawing is included in your note. You can make a copy to duplicate the two notes. Maybe you're going to develop two courses that are very similar to each other. That's a good option to just duplicate it or copy it and save yourself some time in developing the second course. Also, if you want, you can add checkboxes. So I could easily turn this into a list by just clicking show checkboxes. So this is what it does. It just adds those in. I can also take those off if I want to. Another thing to try, and I'm going to make this bigger just by clicking on it. Another thing to try is to go in here and click grab image text. And this will attempt to look at images, find text, and grab that text and include it in your note. So sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't, but give that a try. There's also a button here to copy to Google Docs, which is an exciting idea. When you click on that, it just takes this note that you're working on and it ports it over into Google Docs. And now you can see it says to me, open doc. I can click on that and it pulls in this note right into Google Docs. So very fun, neat way of bridging these two tools. There's a way I like even better that I'll show in just a minute. Now, those are all the tools that you have inside of the Google Notes that you create, but there is one other little option. Here in the upper right corner, there is a pin or a push pin and it says pin note. What this is, is as I add more notes, look what happens to the note that I've already created. Okay, so I add a second note, it moves the first note over to the side. Then I create a third note and a fourth note. Eventually this will get pushed down toward the bottom of the page and it might get lost among all of the other notes. So if I want this note to take priority and to stay at the top, I just pin it and it will always stay here toward the top of my list of notes and the newer notes will appear below. So that's a nice option to have. All right, now before we move on and look quickly at reminders, I wanna also point out that you can also make a list. If you tap L on the keyboard, instead of creating a note, it will help you create a list. So let's say I have a class on Monday and for class on Monday, I need to get this list of supplies. I need to get some poster board. So I type that in and then I hit enter and it moves down to the next list item. I need to bring some markers. I hit enter or return. We're gonna need 30 Chromebooks or laptops and I can move on from there. And then up at the top, I just change the title to prep for Monday. So I don't forget what to bring on Monday. Now watch what happens. When I click away from that, it just adds it as if it were another note in my Google Keep, but it actually acts a little differently than the other notes. Because it is a list, it automatically added checkboxes. And let's say I've got those 30 Chromebooks, they're ready to go. I just click the checkbox and it puts it below the line, meaning it's completed, it's done, it's ready, but it doesn't disappear into thin air. It's still readable, it's just crossed out and below the line. Then later I can go in and get markers and those are moved down below the line as well. Now this is really nice, especially because Google Keep works well on many mobile phones as well as iPads and other devices. So you can check these off on the go. Now also one other thing to notice, notice it's added that label, the course development label to all of these additional notes that I added. If I didn't want that, I can go down and change labels and uncheck course development and take that out. The reason it added course development is because I had clicked here on labels and then I created more notes. If I had just gone back up to the top and clicked notes, then it wouldn't have assumed that these were all course development notes. So that may seem like a minor thing, but it's important to know how to put labels on and how to not put labels on if you don't want them. Okay, so I love these lists. I think they're fantastic. Let's look quickly at reminders here in the upper left. And it's gonna be very similar. 
So I could just put in a note, I need to remind myself to talk to Mr. Smith, and I can put that as being a reminder that will happen at a certain day and time, and then click Save. So pretty similar, it's just that it's got the assumption that you do want to be reminded. And of course, like I showed before, it is possible to add reminders to regular notes as well. So I think Google Keep has a lot of possibilities, especially for organizing your thoughts, doing planning, and things like that. And it would also be helpful for students to start pulling together resources for a paper or thoughts on essays that they're preparing to write. Just it's a great way to do brainstorming, to track things, to plan. But there is one more feature that I really love. Let's say you're in Google Drive or more specifically in Google Docs and you're working on a document. Type in a way, working on a document, and you say to yourself, you know, I wish I had that bit of information that I stored in Google Keep two months ago or a week ago or whatever it might be. Notice what you can do. You can just go up here to Tools and look at what there is here. There's the Keep Notepad. You select that and it brings in all of your notes that you've saved in Google Keep. The ones that you've pinned are there at the top. So now I can just click and drag and drop that information into Google Docs. You can also click here and click Add to Document, and it's also possible to grab individual elements from the notes that you've created. So I could just bring in the drawing, I could just bring in the photos. You know, there's a lot of different possibilities there. Okay, I can bring in even my list if I would like to. There it is, there's my list. So for me, this takes Google Keep to the next level and makes it so much more useful for me because I know that whatever notes I take and put into Google Keep, I will have access to in my Google Drive, in Google Docs, and the other Google tools. So like I said at the beginning, this is one of my new favorite Google tools. I've used it every day since I've learned about it, and it has really made my life a lot easier. So I hope you enjoy using it. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that you'll consider following me on some of my social media platforms, such as Pinterest, Facebook, and Twitter. And please do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students. And watch for a new video at least every Monday.